The book of James, which we're starting, says, Humbly welcome the word which has been planted in you. And I think there's a lot of stress circling today. Stress of the hurricane hitting our country. Stress of Afghanistan and all that's happened there. Stress about the virus or school starting or the end of summer vacation, depending on your role as you stay in life. So if we're going to humbly welcome the word and not let it be uh, completely overwhelmed from our souls by that stress, I want to ask you to pray with me. Let's take one minute to pray particularly for those who have died because of recent tragedies or terrorism, to pray for those who are in terrible situations, and to pray for ourselves that we could have God's peace in the midst of all of this. This will help if you actually close your eyes. And I'll tell you when the minute is done. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, it's interesting. Jesus says, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Sometimes it takes quiet moments like that to engage our hearts. Maybe you found that peaceful. Sometimes we go crazy if we're not quiet. Maybe you found that very hard. Maybe the quiet was making you anxious because it's hard to stop. Sometimes we get into patterns like that in our life. I think it really comes down to our hearts. Jesus talks about the heart. He offers an astounding truth that all the evils that are in the world, they start in our heart as if to say, you really shouldn't be worried, obviously. Hear me out. I'm not trying to spread the virus. I'm not trying to spread terrorism. But he's saying, you really shouldn't be worried about the virus. You really shouldn't be worried about terrorism. You shouldn't be worried about all these things. You should be worried about your heart. Because that's the only thing that you can give to God. And if you do not give that to God, of course the world is going to hell. Because the one thing you could do to have it, you're not doing it. What if we gave our hearts to the Lord Jesus? And what if we did that every day? What if we started the, the day that way? I have a holy habit that I want to encourage you to consider today. Maybe it's too late to start this day, but you can plan for tomorrow. Because, how do I put this? There are troubles in our world. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of depression. And so we feel bad. And then we turn to esprit, probably, if we have one, to escape from feeling bad. And maybe it works for a little while, but then because of the way our brains are wired and the way that the screens emit a certain light and the content that is received, we probably end up feeling worse, if we're honest, if we really reflect on it. But at least it's not the bad that we felt at first. So we kind of go with it, at least I can go with it, because it's just our troubled hearts that are yearning for peace. And unless we go to God, we're not going to find that peace. Certainly not on the screen. So here's the holy habit. I want you to think about your nighttime routine. Some people call it sleep hygiene. And when the work is done, and maybe the kids have been put to bed, and, and you're, I don't know, I guess looking for leisure or whatever, it's very common that people would just watch something or pick out their phone or maybe get into bed with their phone. And that's always a danger. If you're not married to your phone, you shouldn't be sleeping with your phone. If you want to get married to some, if you want to get married to somebody someday, you shouldn't be preparing for that by sleeping with your phone today. And so I want you to think about this. In our sleep hygiene, we're giving this intimate and precious space of sleep and the preparation for sleep. We're giving it to a world of troubling anxieties and comparisons. If you look at social media, every video, every picture is a comparison. I'm not measuring up to this person. I'm not as funny as them. I don't have as beautiful people in my life as them. And we're getting thousands of those images in maybe one encounter with our phone. And so an already troubled heart is heaping on thousands of other troubles. And then we try to sleep and we can't sleep. 
So we feel bad, and we reach for that same phone again for more of things that only add to our troubles and anxieties and isolation and our feeling alone. And nobody wants that. God doesn't want that for us. We certainly don't want that, but maybe we have to look at our habits. So, here's what I suggest. Get an alarm clock that has no connection to the internet. Set it before you go to bed. Put your phone in a drawer or somewhere outside of your bedroom. And then begin your wind-down routine. Maybe some prayer with your spouse. Maybe some prayer with your heavenly spouse, God. And go to sleep without the internet anywhere near you. And tell people, hey, you're not going to reach me after this hour. Call me, I'll hear it, and then I'll go to the drawer and get the call if you really need me. But I need some quiet. I need some freedom. I need some peace. And then in the, remember, you've set the alarm, which has no contact with the internet. In the morning, you're going to be woken up, and you won't need to go to the phone first thing. You go to that alarm. Stop it. Maybe you go to the bathroom, whatever. That's your business. But then before you go to the internet, which is a gateway to info and updates, what happened last night? Wow, whoa, 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 that's bad. Whoa. All this stuff, before you go to all that roller coaster, you go to God. And literally on your knees, you say, Lord God, help me this day. Give me your peace. Give me your help. Help me to be a saint. Help me to help all those people who need my help. Or if you don't know what to say to God, you could do what we did a couple minutes ago where you take one minute of quiet prayer and just let God in. That's effectively saying, God, what do you want? If we were to ask that God, what do you want? Miracles would come in our life. But beware the devil, who does not want you to hear anything that I've been saying, who is prowling like a roaring lion and wants to take away the word that has been planted in you. He knows that if you go to God, you're going to have peace. So he's going to try to distract you every minute of every day. He's going to try to wake you up in the middle of the night and have you turn to things that are not good. And so we have to prepare for this battle against the devil. And ask God, in the midst of the battle, ask God for help. Lord, help me. Great St. Michael prayer you could pray. Our lives change when our habits change. Our lives could be holy and blessed and happy and full of good friends who we have great fun with that's not sinful fun. And we could have such joy. But instead, we just have bad habits that lead us to isolation and scrolling and more and more scrolling lives away. And God is something better. And if you do this, you could be the hero that our world is looking for, the hero that our world needs. You could be the next Mother Teresa, or your home could be so peaceful if you work at it and let God into it. And all these good things could come. We have to ask for God's peace, have holy habits, and let God save everything.